Hi everybody, I am Jared Rossagini Vlogger, and on today's vlog, I will be discussing how to become a professional genealogist. This is honestly the number one question that I get asked and the truth is, is to become a professional genealogist, all you have to do is start taking clients. There's no regulations on becoming a professional genealogist, and the only requirement is that you feel that you have the necessary experience to start having clients pay you to do research. I highly suggest that before you start taking clients, that you do pro bono work volunteering for all sorts of people, especially for friends and coworkers, because those are really easy. In my own experience, I would often just be hanging out with friends and start asking them about their family history because family history just intrigues me. And we would usually end up on Genie with me building them a tree and finding out all sorts of information. And I would usually then dive in deeper researching their families. And when I would be at work and there was downtime and I had access to a computer, I would end up doing the same thing with my coworkers. And through that, I gained a lot of experience working on hundreds of trees over a bunch of years. But once you feel that you have the experience to start taking on clients, the first thing that you need to figure out is how much you're going to charge for your services. From my own experience in the genealogy field, I found that you can usually break up the way people charge into four different tiers. The first tier, which is where most people will start, is the five to twenty-five dollar range. I've seen a lot of people will jump in and go to sites like Fiverr or Guru, different freelance websites, and they'll offer their services that way. I've done that as well. I worked on Fiverr for a little bit. I personally didn't like it that much. It's kind of constraining, and the way that they have it set up makes it really difficult for genealogy projects because can't just define it as one hour, or three hours, or five hours of research. Often projects have to take different phases, and you're often looking at at least 10 hours minimum if you want anything significant. But I found 5 to $25 is a pretty good place to start, especially if you're going to be charging any of your friends or family for different research. The next tier is the $25 to $50 range. And I find most genealogists fall within this range. You're going to find a lot of people in this range who have a good amount of experience behind them. You're going to find a few people who have certifications, a lot of people who are part of different genealogy societies or have different roles that may give them a bit more merit. The next tier from that is your $50 to $75 range. And usually for this, you're looking at people who have a lot of experience, a lot of them are going to have certifications, sometimes even multiple certifications. You're going to find a lot of people with very niche expertise in this as well. And also if you're looking to hire people in big cities, you'll usually find they're on the higher end of things. So if you're trying to hire someone in New York City or Chicago or LA, you're often looking at this higher range for those genealogists. And the last tier is your $75 and up range. Usually in this tier, you're looking at either hiring full-on companies or hiring people with very, very specific expertises or people in certain locations that have very limited access. For most people watching this video, I highly suggest starting out in that first tier. Some of you may be able to start in that second tier depending on where you're located or if you already have a pretty good expertise behind you. But just because you're starting in a low tier doesn't necessarily mean that you're going to be stuck there. It's just a place to start and as you build your career and expand your knowledge, you can start to charge more. Once you've decided on how much you're going to charge for your services, the next step, which is arguably the hardest, is to find your clients. Now there's all sorts of ways to market and promote yourself, but the best thing to do right off the bat is join the Association of Professional Genealogists, also known as APGen. All you have to do to join APGen is to pay the membership fee, and once you do that, you can put yourself in their directory, and this is one of the first websites people will find if they're Googling professional genealogists. You can put yourself in the directory, you can define what your expertise is, where you have research experience, and from there, you will 
get clients. I joined AP Gen right off the bat when I decided to become a professional genealogist, and I've had a lot of clients who have found me through that directory. So it's really a great place to start. But I found that one of the best ways to advertise your services is to build a reputation in the genealogy community. And you can do this a lot of different ways. The first thing you can do is to join local genealogy chapters. See if there are any societies that have anything near you. You can also go to your family history centers, see what programs they may have. See if any genealogists are coming near you. And another big thing is to go to the large genealogy conferences. You want to go talk to other genealogists, network. Almost all the big names in genealogy attend the conferences, and there are a bunch of them that are around the country. Every year, Roots Tech is in Salt Lake City. You have NGS and FGS, which will actually be merging soon. But beyond the national conferences, there are a lot of smaller conferences that may be of interest to you regional conferences, state conferences, sometimes even county conferences. You may find conferences that have specific subjects like genetic genealogy or lineage society conferences. There's a lot of different things that you can attend and especially within your own expertise you really want to get to know the other players who are part of that industry. Not a lot of people would think it, but networking is a really vital part of being a professional genealogist and creating relationships with researchers of all different backgrounds and all different expertises is really going to be important in expanding your knowledge and expanding your abilities. But one of the best ways to build your reputation in the genealogy field today is to create genealogy content. That can range from getting a book published to publishing an article in a journal or a magazine or even creating your own blog or vlog just like what I'm doing here or just having a big presence on social media, creating a Facebook, Instagram, Twitter account, Pinterest, all sorts of different social media accounts that put out different pieces of genealogy content. This is really a great way to do it because not only can you put your work out there to be reviewed by other people so they can see do you actually know what you're doing or are you just talking a big game, but also by helping others out and helping them build their own genealogy path, you can then create a reputation because people are going to like you for helping them out. The classic way to build your reputation in genealogy is to get certified. And there are a bunch of different certifying bodies that have different standards on how they do things. But getting certified gives you a good amount of clout in that you know what you're doing, that you know how to write a report. And a lot of times when you get certified, that gives you the ability to charge more and get clients who are willing to pay that because you have that certification behind you. It is not a requirement to be certified to be a genealogist. A lot of professional genealogists and a lot of people with big names in the genealogy field aren't certified. I personally am not certified. It's something that I've looked into in the past. A lot of times to do certification, you're looking at about a year or two year process, sometimes a little less, and you're also looking at a lot of money to be able to do that. So it's not exactly an easy process to take, but if you are willing to do that, it may be worthwhile for you. Another great way to build your reputation as well as advertise is to go and do speaking engagements. You can do this at local genealogy societies. You can look at speaking at conferences and submitting paper proposals. You can look at doing this for different events. Maybe there's a local family history center that has a discovery day happening, or maybe there's a library that's looking at having some sort of event and you want to go and speak at that. Just going out and speaking about your genealogy will build your reputation and it's also a great way to get clients. Almost every time I've gone out and done a speaking engagement, I've had one, two, even three people end up being clients just from that speaking engagement. So now that we've talked about pricing and advertising and building your reputation, I want to discuss some things that I think are absolutely vital that you figure out before you take the leap in taking on clients. Now some of this stuff is fairly straightforward, but it's the type of things that a lot of people just don't think about when they're trying to take this path. 
The first thing is, is to figure out how you want to create your business entity. Do you want to do this without creating an LLC or any sort of corporate entity? And is that something you can do in your state or area? But for some people, you may be able to declare it as a hobby or you may not have to declare it as anything. It's just better to have the understanding before you have a problem. The next thing is something that a lot of people do not do when they start out taking on genealogy clients, and it's a little risky, but a lot of people feel it's not necessary, but having a contract. There's a lot of things with genealogy that the average person just doesn't really understand, and you can run into issues when you're having people that don't know anything about genealogy, and they're not getting the answers that they were looking for. So making sure that you have a contract and putting that out there so they know before that they hire you what they're getting into and the possibilities and the limits of genealogy research that's just protecting yourself a little bit more. As well, if you do any sort of content that you put out about your research, you should look into doing a permission form that you can have your clients fill out. This gives you a lot of content that you can use, but it also ensures that if you use anything that you did that you were paid to do by a client, you're not going to run into any issues with them if they see that content down the line. Another major thing to do, which joining the Association of Professional Genealogists and just filling out the directory will actually help you kind of figure it out, but what is your expertise? You can figure out kind of like an overall expertise. So in my case, I would define that as Jewish genealogy and genetic genealogy. Those are my two major expertises. But then also, what are your more finite expertises? Do you have something that's really niche that not a lot of people will want, but the people who do want it don't really have that many options? So in my own case, I specialize in the southern New Jersey Jewish agricultural colonies, but I also specialize in the Portuguese Jewish community of Amsterdam. I have other specialties as well, but just kind of figuring out what is it that you know will give you a better ability to find the right clients. Now something that piggybacks off that a little bit is your branding for your genealogy services. Do you wanna create a company? Do you wanna create a company name? Do you just wanna have it as your name? Do you want to create any sort of website, social media presence? And if so, do you need to create a logo? Do you want to create an overall theme? You need to figure out how you're going to brand yourself because that can often be important in how clients find you and what type of clients find you. Now, when I became a professional genealogist, one of the things that I found the most difficult that I think a lot of people should really look into before taking the leap to being professional is report writing. It's something that when you're doing your own research or just researching for friends for fun, you don't really think about. You do the research, you build the tree, you add the documents to the tree, you show it to the people and everyone's all happy and hunky-dory. But when you're a professional genealogist, you need to write a report about your research. One thing with genealogy is that you never know what you're going to find or what you're not going to find. And if you don't find anything, you can't just tell the client, well, I didn't find anything, sorry about that. You need to create a report showing what research that you did, where did you look, you know, did you find anything that could possibly even correlate, you know, anything to keep note of for future research. And plus in these reports, you need to tell that client, what are the next steps that they can take, if any? What do you suggest? Are there other researchers that you suggest? And you also need to learn how to put source citations, proper source citations. Because when you put out these reports, if that client then goes to another genealogist to further that research or goes to a big genealogy company, if they give them a report that is just terrible, not only is that going to ruin your reputation with the genealogists who see that report, but it's also going to make that client not so happy if the uh, new genealogists say, well, this report's kind of trash. So make sure that you learn how to write reports, how to put in the proper source citations, what to include in that, what to tell the client. In my own experience, I found that this book, Professional Genealogist by Elizabeth Schoen Mills, was really one of the best things in helping me create my reports. Uh, if you join APGen or other sorts of societies, they often will have 
different report templates that you can look at. Sometimes you can go on and find different ones on certain websites, but writing the report is probably the hardest thing to figure out when you go professional. And the last big thing that you need to keep in mind if you're planning to become a professional genealogist is having continuing education. So going to conferences and your local genealogy societies is a big part of that. You'll learn a whole lot. But you should also start looking into a lot of different other options. You can find different courses in different community colleges or different colleges around the country, different universities. Uh, there's not a whole lot when it comes to genealogy, but there is some out there. But you can also look into the genealogy institutes, stuff like GRIP or SLIG. You're going to get a lot of the most advanced researchers teaching all sorts of subjects ranging from genetic genealogy to report writing to things about you know Italian genealogy or American genealogy, Irish genealogy. There's just all sorts of topics that you'll find in these genealogy institutes. Now as you go along your path as a professional genealogist, there are a lot of different routes that you can take. The most common being that you just work for yourself as a private genealogist and you can take clients however you want, set your own hours and just be your own boss. And this is how most people do it. Uh, you'll find some full-time genealogists who do this. It's kind of hard to do it full-time just because you may have a month where you have four or five clients and you may have two or three months where you have none. It's really hard to tell. Um, but if you're looking just to do this as kind of like a hobby sort of thing or just a part-time gig as a side to your full-time, then working for yourself is probably just the best option. Another possible path is to look into working for one of the larger companies. Uh, you can look into Ancestry, Legacy Tree, Genealogist, Trace. Uh, you can also look into different lineage societies. They are often hiring genealogists. Now, when working for these companies, there are two paths that you can take within that itself. One is doing contract work, so you'd probably be working part-time, and a lot of companies do this, especially if you have a very niche expertise. The other is just working full-time for these companies, and full-time uh, for these companies is fairly hard to do. There are a lot of genealogists out there nowadays just because it's so much easier to be a genealogist. So there's a lot of people who are looking to become professional. Most of the time, people will start out as contract workers and then build their way into being full-time. I personally have done some contract work for some of these companies, and I can tell you that if this is a path that you want to take working for these companies, you need to make sure that your report writing is spot on. And the last path I'll be discussing in this video is forensic genealogy. Now for years, forensic genealogy was mostly just heir research, figuring out what estates went to what heirs and showing the genealogical proof behind it. But with the introduction of genetic genealogy, forensic genealogy has expanded to include a lot more. First, it started out with identifying unknown remains. And this has been a really big thing in forensic genealogy. And there's a lot of volunteer programs such as the DNA Doe Project that does this type of research. But the biggest thing which has really expanded the forensic genealogy field is the use of genetic genealogy in criminal investigations. Forensic genealogy is very difficult to get into and requires that you have an advanced expertise in genealogy. If you're looking to get into forensic genetic genealogy, I highly suggest starting out by doing volunteer work as a search angel. This means getting adoptees who have done DNA tests and helping them figure out who are their biological parents. Now there's a lot I've discussed in this video, but in all reality, if you're really looking to become a professional genealogist, just dive in and start building your career. Thank you so much for checking out this video. If you enjoyed, please be sure to give it a thumbs up. You can also click right about here if you'd like to subscribe. It's completely free to do so. You can also follow me on Facebook, Twitter, or Instagram at Genie Vlogger. I'm the Genie Vlogger. See you in my next video.